crew, let's start with The Voice. The latest Resolve political monitor is bad news for the Anthony Albanese government. It shows that support for The Voice has fallen below a majority. Prue, it looks like Australians aren't going to be bullied into backing the race-based referendum. Bullied or conned, Rita, because I think that they thought that by playing this, you know, whole emotional bullying style of, uh, you know, forcing us to feel guilty if we didn't vote yes, hasn't worked. It's blown up in their face and it's treating us all with contempt because, frankly, the Australian people know what the real agenda is. And this is this hidden agenda, this Trojan horse that they thought they could get away with, when really we're all understanding now that this is just the start of a much bigger uh, picture where we're going to see, as stated, and they were very clear about it, all being based on the Uluru Statement of the Heart, and mm. that, you know, it was going to lead to treaty and truth-telling, compensation, sovereignty. And we're all waking up to it, thank goodness. And, you know, Albanese's digging in, but if he really wants a yes vote to get through, he just needs to talk about, make it about recognition in the Constitution. And I think most of us would vote for that. Well, there already is chatter about delaying this referendum to next year. I think the yes vote now thinks they need to buy some time. Uh, but I don't think that's going to convince people. I think the longer they leave it, the, the more time people have to actually investigate what this means. Like you said, the voice is only part one. There's truth-telling and treaty to come. Mm. Um, and Anthony Albanese has been clear about his support for the Uluru Statement and implementing it. Um, so, yeah, I don't think time is really what they need. But let's have a look at some of this data. Uh, the first graph really shows the collapse of the yes vote. It's starting well above 60% last year, uh, while the no vote was well under 40%. And now, as you can see, they've crossed over and the yes vote is down to 49% compared with the no's at 51%. Uh, and also, I've got some state-by-state state figures here as well, which are interesting. Um, you can see there Victoria is still very strongly, yes, 56%, but Queensland, 44%, WA, 49%, New South Wales, 53%. Interesting uh, data there. What do you make of that, Prue? Well, it, it's telling us, you know, that it's not going to get up because, as we know, it's got to be the majority of people in the majority of states. There is a concern that that very strong pulling power of Tasmania may sort of tip things over the edge. But I still believe that, you know, people are waking up and they understand the dangers of opening this door to a whole Pandora's box of, well, we don't really know how far it's going to go. So it's interesting that the true conservative states of uh, Tasmania, who are also uh, very flushed with green voters, and Victoria is the same. And, you know, green voters, as we know, don't engage their brains when it comes to voting, because if they did, they wouldn't vote green. And also they're a lot of young people. And they won't bother about the detail and the implications of what this really means.